afternoon. Welcome to episode number six of the Zoom Town Experiment. In this particular episode, we're going to be looking at a motor drive to power our N20 motors for the Zoomy. But before we get into that, let's take a quick moment to look at what we'll cover in this video. I'll provide a brief explanation of why a motor drive is needed, primary factors for motor drive choice, and of course that is how it relates to our needs. We'll look at practical testing, we'll have a look at the schematic and the code, and of course we'll be running the motor and checking its performance along with the drive. And finally, we'll wrap it up with a quick analysis. The Pico, as wonderful as it is, simply can't output enough power in the form of voltage and or current to drive a motor. A motor, even as small as our N20, requires substantially more power than any of the output pins can provide from the Pico. In order to drive a motor, an amplifier of sorts is needed to boost that output signal, the logic signals, into an amplified power signal that can actually operate the motor. Motor drives also perform other functions. They make it easy to control the speed. Usually we're going to provide it with a PWM signal or perhaps an analog signal for it to generate the power output to drive the motor at the required speed. Further, the motor drive also takes care of the forward and reversing so that we don't have to deal with that in our code. We just simply tell it go forward or go reverse. Motor drives should also be efficient so that they don't waste energy in the form of heat. Here's a list of factors that influenced my choice for a motor drive for this particular project. It needs to be of the correct type for a DC motor, in this case a brushed motor. Operating parameters of voltage and current must match or exceed that of the demands of the motor. Module as opposed to individual components. I don't want to be soldering small surface mount components. It needs to provide variable speed control at the motor. In essence, we would be providing it with a PWM signal to get that speed control. It needs directional control to handle the forward and reverse functions of the motor. It has to be compact. If it's not compact, it's going to be tough to fit it into our package known as the Zoomy. It needs to be efficient so that it runs cool and doesn't waste battery power. Ideally, it should be a dual DC motor drive module so that it reduces cost and space requirements. And finally, it has to be low cost. We keep looking at cost as a primary driver for a lot of these decisions, and unfortunately, it's a cold hard truth. I have to watch how much I spend on this project. Within the data sheet, you'll find very important specifications that help you to decide if it will work for your application with this particular motor. Now, we already know the motor is six volt, and it's going to draw about 300 or yeah 300 milliamps at most and typically it's probably going to be pulling about 40 milliamps so that's kind of our criteria well uh, and we need six volts here this driver is good up to 15 volts and uh, output current is 1.2 amps av average 3.2 amps peak and if i recall that's for about a period of 10 milliseconds we're not going to be anywhere near that, even with both motors fully stalled. So I'm not concerned about that. Um, the logic of this is for two motors. That's wonderful. It keeps it compact, cost down, and it's for DC motors. Uh, it doesn't specifically state brushed DC motors, but I think it's safe to assume that it's implied in this case. 
Uh, they go through uh, various wiring, etc., output pins, uh, absolute maximum ratings, and of course we don't want to go anywhere near that. Uh, then our supply voltage VCC to control our logic is 3 volts, so that's right up the par, right in the standing that we need for uh, the Pico. So uh, those specs look really good. Now we'll look at the size. Uh, as far as my spec was to have it compact, and here you can see um, the... Uh, TV6612 is uh, in that small package, and then this larger package is a similar driver with similar capabilities, uh, but you can see it's massively bulky and probably very inefficient uh, based on the size of that heat sink. So it's getting rid of a lot of heat for a reason, and I'm going to call that inefficiency. This is very economical, and certainly uh, this newer one is much smaller, much more compact, but far more efficient. Now we can take a look at the wiring before we start getting into the practical testing. And here you can see in this schematic we've got the uh, Pico W off on the left, uh, the TB6612 FNG over here. Please note that the pin layout is not accurate, so if you're looking at a, a module right now, uh, yes, these are out of sequence, and that will be corrected in the final schematic. Here's our little DC motor. Uh, we're supplying it with uh, a ground into ground and 6 volts for the motor into VM on the module. We need to provide it with uh, ground from the logic side and we need to provide 3.3 volts from the Pico as well for VCC and for the standby signal. Now you can see I've got um, BN1, BN2, and PW. MB, that would be for what we would refer to as the right motor. Uh, we're working with in this test only our PWM signal, our uh, AIN1 and AIN2, those are for directional control. So it does require two pins for directional control, one pin as a PDM, PWM, to control our speed for the motor. And those are all wired up here in the lower right-hand corner using GPIO pins 16 through 21. Over here on the workbench, you can kind of see it's all wired up, as that's described there. Uh, as I showed you with just the bare module, I do have uh, right-angle headers on it. I'm expecting this to go into the lower deck of the Zumi and height is a problem. I don't want to waste a lot of height, so I use right angle headers. So all the wires, as you can see here, its height's very small. I have room to accommodate the width. At least that's what I'm thinking. And then, of course, I'm just using some DuPont connector uh, jumper wires to get it all wired up. I'm providing uh, 6 volts or 5 volts, realistically, uh, from my bench power supply. Here's our motor, as we were showing uh, a week ago in the last episode. So now let's take a look at the code, how we're going to control this. I won't go into a tremendous amount of detail here, uh, but we do have to import uh, some basic functions. We're going to set up a couple of pins. Uh, we're going to set up a PWM pin, set its frequency at 1,000. And we're going to give it two pins for direction, uh, N1 and N2, as it's referred to on the module itself. Here we've got a function that I created. It's very simple. It will take a speed value and a direction value. Based on the direction, it'll set the N1 and N2 pins for the correct direction to go either forward or reverse. We will set the duty cycle for the PWM based on a speed range setting between 0 and 1000, and this does the conversion factor for it. Then we set the motor into motion by setting its duty cycle. Here in the main section of the code, 
we're just going to set a few uh, rough variables to get things going. Some of these aren't really needed for my test here. We will then start the motor at the speed of 900, running in forward for five seconds. Then we'll set the velocity back to zero and set the motor uh, duty cycle back to zero. Then we're going to ramp up the speed from zero to a thousand units, incrementing by 25 units each time. I'm sorry, incrementing by 50 units each time, but starting at 25. So we'll count up to uh, 1000 with DC. We'll set the wheel into motion or the motor at uh, this velocity and in this direction. And we'll slow it down a little bit by sleeping 250 milliseconds each time through that loop until it gets to full speed. And we'll rest for a second, set the motor back to zero. Then we'll run the same exact routine, but this time in reverse instead of forward. And that'll be all that the pro program routine does. Let's go back to the bench. I'll turn on our power supply and we'll run the code and see how it behaves. That's running at a constant speed. Here it's ramping up and forward. Ramping up and reverse. And that's all there is to that test. Now the next test that I'm going to do, I'm going to set the motor to run for a couple of minutes. And what I want to do is to feel the motor driver chip itself. Now that very well could get pretty darn hot, so I'm going to be very careful of how I do that. Now let's go ahead and run the program to see how it behaves. Here we're running at a constant RPM. Now we're going to start accelerating up through that ramp up speed, and I'm kind of slowing it down. I want to monitor my current. And I'm hitting about 100 milliamps. So not so bad. Now what I want to do, I'm going to start the motor running, let it run for a couple of minutes, and I'll monitor the heat that's given off by the chip. I want to see if that gets hot. If that gets hot, then I got to worry about uh, heat problems both within the enclosure of the Zumi as well as to potentially overloading the chip. Now, in truth, we should be far from overheating based on the specifications. Using a little magic and editing, we'll let this run for about 10 minutes total, and then I'll check it occasionally throughout that process, but we'll, of course, fast forward through it because this will be a very boring test. say that test was a resounding success. I don't think it even got up to room temperature above room temperature this whole test. Most of the test I had uh, drag on the motor pulling about a hundred milliamps so that's pretty well loaded. Probably much more than I think we'll see in the real world. No heating at all. The motor is cool and the chip is cool. I think we've got a winner here. Here is my analysis for this experiment and test. It certainly fits the parameters for voltage and current. It's a module as opposed to components, so yes, that definitely uh, fits into my needs. It provides variable speed control very nicely. It provides forward and reverse control. Quite simply, it does utilize a total of two pins per motor to accomplish that, 
which does seem wasteful, but we don't need all the pins, uh, GPIO pins, on the Pico anyway. It certainly is compact, especially with those right angle headers on top. I think that'll fit nicely inside the design for the Zoomy. Power efficient and doesn't run hot. I cannot emphasize how important that is in the bigger picture. So I'm really pleased that it was running very cool. It is a dual DC motor drive module, so it has everything we need to run two motors and do it very well. And it's a reasonably good value. It's not too expensive. I priced it out on AliExpress for a total of 20 units, which is more than I need, and that'll cost $2.88 each. So with that, I'm pretty sure we've got a motor and a driver for our Zoomies. Looking forward to next week's episode, we're going to be looking at uh, the wheels in the powertrain deck. That means that uh, we'll be looking at any of the suspension components, the motors, the motor drive, and the lower deck or base chassis of the Zoomy. So now we'll start seeing things come together as sub-assemblies. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode next week. Thanks for watching.